Hi all, I have an epic game encounter to show you, Stockfish playing against Leela. So if Leela could just draw this game, it would help secure her chances for the Super Final. There's still quite a number of games to go, but uh, this game played yesterday was quite important to try and at least draw with the black pieces. Let's see what happened against the mighty Stockfish playing white. D4 from Stockfish, Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight F3, D5, Knight C3, Bishop E7, Queen's Gambit declined territory, Bishop G5, Black Castles, E3, B6, pretty classical stuff. C takes D5, E takes Bishop D3, Knight BD7. This is the end of the book given. Now Stockfish castles, C5, and now Bishop F5. This puts some pressure on the black position. Bishop B7, and we have Queen A4. So some pressure again on that D7 knight. We have H6, and the bishop drops to F4. A6, and it might be useful for black to have B5. The queen drops back, rook e8, rook fd1, and now bishop f8 is played. So here, if c4, for example, a3 looks reasonable, and this position looks quite nice actually for white, it's got a nagging advantage here. Uh, so bishop f8. This is quite committal to release the tensions, play c4. h4, very interesting move, increasing the grip on the dark squares. In many games I've seen, uh, Stockfish is, is like a supercharged Botvinnik. He has such an, you know, Botvinnik used to have an iron grip on, on positions. And here it seems Stockfish is playing the role of Mikhail Botvinnik, an iron grip over the dark squares. And will white want to make other trade-offs to increase the dark square grip here we see c takes d4 this gives leela the potentially dreaded isolated queen's pawn iqp as it's uh, abbreviated rook takes d4 so stockfish is really interested in piling up some pressure on d5 the perks of the isolated queen's pawn sometimes there's useful hook squares on c4 and e4 and the rooks are sometimes quite active on the adjacent files c and e files so it has some perks that play with the ice ace's queen's pawn rook c8 pins that knight on c3 rook a d1 bishop c5 the rook drops back and now b5 the queen steps out of the way of this potentially nasty scenario of discovered attacks queen e7 the knight goes to e2 so an iron grip over that d4 square the knights reinforce d4 here knight e4 hitting the rook the rook moves bishop b6 rook takes c8 a pair of rooks come off and knight e d4 white seems extremely comfortable rook c5 we have bishop h3 queen d8 knight f5 and this knight is difficult to dislodge because of that h6 pawn there Bishop c7, we have knight free to d4, which offers double pawns, believe it or not. So yeah, this is quite a dynamic uh, move by Stockfish, not just taking on c7, but offering double pawns on the plate, some structural damage, but it reinforces white's control over the e5 square. It is actually taken by Leela, e takes, so interesting dynamic pawn structure here. Black with the isolated queen's pawn, white with the double pawns. White has an iron grip, Botvinnik style, over key squares though. The knight on f5 looks particularly dangerous. Knight d f6, f3, kicking that e4 knight away. So these hook squares don't seem that useful. White could potentially play also b3, but doesn't actually. Queen d3, bishop c8. Queen e3, bishop takes f5. Some simplification. Uh, White was threatening after queen e3, knight e7. For example, a5, knight e7 check, taking on c8. And this is a big problem because there's a tactic here, knight e6, hitting the queen, fork, 
and hitting the rook so that just wins an exchange so c5 can be a problem rook here it seems already uh, to be aware of keep a note of that rook on c5 it's a potentially loose piece so okay so bishop takes f5 so we have this position uh, where that knight's taken off instead of a5 or anything so bishop takes f5 we have queen c7 it seems here that knight takes f5 might be an interesting way to play for a draw at least with black black's not really i believe playing for anything else but a draw here knight takes f5 as an example the the rook is attacked and can use the hook square at c4 and here for example king h2 king h8 g3 queen c8 hitting the knight if the knight goes back to the blockade square it looks very nice it looks very solid and controlled but can white actually win this position it's a different matter maybe uh, this is about equal and this perhaps is the way that sh that ideally black should have played to reach a kind of level position with annoying pressure on the c file at least to keep white occupied so here though Lila played queen c7 instead the bishop drops back we have now knight c4 hitting the queen and maybe this excited Lila because where is the queen going the queen has to hold the f4 pawn the knight's also controlling e5 so can't play queen e5 we'll just take there so how does the queen hold f4 if the queen drops back to c1 this looks unpleasant for the discovered attack say queen e7 that looks unpleasant there's e3 to play with say that's taken away black should be fine here though this looks pleasant enough for black indeed so uh we have actually though queen f2 is stockfish leaving a pawn hanging is it a lethal trap set by stockfish or is stockfish underestimating the power of a positional exchange sacrifice this perhaps to humanize is controversial however you look at it uh, is white playing with fire here no stockfish is playing with Leela okay can this pawn be taken uh, well perhaps it shouldn't have been taken and something else like trying to uh, get this rook away from c5 away from the firing line of the queen but it seems really tempting enough what could possibly go wrong with taking that pawn intuitively there will be a loose rook on on c5 and in fact but Leela must have seen this loose rook on c5 here that white has a mini combination initially can you guess white to play if I give you five seconds to pause the video so what would you play here with white okay knight e6 it forks the rook and queen now this is not the end of the world in its own right actually because by taking on e6 a pawn comes to the center which sometimes is good and there's a couple of pawns for the exchange potentially of the queen takes the other plays knight takes b2 so two pawns for the exchange is often uh an interesting bet uh here i mean it's virtually forced to play knight takes b2 if knight e5 then white's clearly just a big advantage to exchange up if queen takes h4 then check check and bishop g6 is not just the exchange up but the black king is in trouble uh, the back row and the bishop cutting out the key escape squares of the black king here uh, means this is absolutely lost if black has to play that <laughs> otherwise yeah giving up a piece it's, it's just totally lost so knight takes b2 is fairly forced two pawns for the exchange now ordinarily uh, if there's a general trend that there might be more pawns in the future then often this is a promising positional exchange sacrifice so which engine has it right here however 
There are a number of interesting, weird and wonderful forcing moves in this position. And the first one, as Fisher says, uh, not of Stockfish, <laughs> he used to say, perhaps a Caesar's check, perhaps a Plaza check. Sometimes it can lead to victory. Sometimes it might worsen the position. Here, this is a good idea. The king is brought to the center. And we have another check. And there are big problems in this position. The king actually goes again towards the center with king e8. If the king goes to g8, then queen a8, believe it or not, is a key move here. This is one of the remarkable things I find about this position, actually, which probably definitely makes it very hard to find these tactics. You might wonder why on earth queen a8? And why not say bishop g6? On bishop g6, there's king h8, which provides knight g8. So, for example, here. And white can play a tactical move in this position, bishop h7, threatening checkmate. Uh, so, for example, check, but having to take that, check, pick up the knight. And white should have a small advantage. Small advantage. But with queen a8 check, this makes a whole world of difference, actually. Because now, after king f7, there's queen a7 check. And crucially, this diagonal is protected. So this queen d4 resource is is taken out of the equation. It's checked off by the queen, <laughs> like a checklist. I think checklist comes from checks. So the queen, by checking, is, is crossing that off the checklist. Cover the diagonal. And now, here, bishop g6. And in fact, this is very different now. So, for example, king h8, this is just in win variation then, rook e8 is absolutely crushing because there's no queen d4 check here. So, black's falling apart here at the seams. So, yeah, very interesting lines here after king g8, queen a8 is crucial. If king f8, then bishop g6 is really, really strong, threatening mate. Knight g4 is absolutely desperate. Okay, threatening. Uh, Queen h2 and maybe some other checks, but white just plays check here, check here, and actually wins the queen. For example, here, queen b8 check picks up the queen. Or if the king had gone to f6, then queen f7 check, and then again, queen c7 check picks up the queen. So, yeah, there's a whole world of trouble here with uh, these other king moves if the king doesn't move towards the center. So the king moved to e8. And unfortunately, now White has another mega tactic, stage two of the tactical tour. White to play. What does White to play here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, Bishop takes b5 check. Yeah, this knight is also a loose piece in this position to be exploited. Uh, if Bishop g6, king d8, rook b1, queen d4 check, and knight d1. And black's actually okay, threatening checkmate here. Uh, so if white has to give up the exchange, it's not very good news at all. Black actually has the advantage. So this is really, really important. This bishop takes b5 check. Just have a look at this again. Um, if the king goes to h2, it's no good either. Just take here. Well, it's even. It can be even by potential check. But uh, no, White's wanting to win this. Bishop takes b5 check. So king f8. Yeah, because otherwise just taking and taking the knight and coming back to f2 on any check. Uh, so king f8. Well, we can actually put that on the board just to be sure. Queen takes b5 check. Take the knight and come to f2. Big advantage. Outside pass pawn. Uh, only a pawn for the exchange. So king f8 was played. Now queen a8 check. Queen a7 check coming onto that key diagonal. Queen b6 check. Bit of toying here. Bit of toying. And now here, rook b1. It's attacking this loose piece, which means white's essentially becoming the exchange up for not too much 
and in fact white is not just exchange up here but has potentially if picking up b5 and outside past a pawn of the check here in fact outside past a pawn this spells disaster for Leela previously unbeaten in t sec is now in a terrible position it seems she could have bypassed this entire issue earlier by simplification uh, but um yeah now is it's a lost position let's see the technique e5 check queen c3 we have a4 pushing that past pawn uh it's yeah queen's eyeing e5 so if it's taking yeah e5 dropping that duo being lost is is not very good uh we have e4 queen c7 queen g5 f4 queen g3 now an almighty pin with knight g8 this is an almighty pin which stockfish dares to just put the pressure on and allow all of these checks to happen but crucially white controls now h4 so the checks have a limited time only offer uh, we have check yeah if queen e1 check then king h2 big advantage to white so this check is chosen taking this pawn but the checks are about to run out after king e3 now d4 is played this is desperate if queen e6 white just cashes out here even though three pawns down with queen takes g8 check because this outside a pawn is too fast it just queens so uh this is pretty desperate d4 check that's taken check the king's walking up the board after taking e4 <laughs> yeah but the king will find shelter basically by walking up the board and eventually finding shelter from the checks and uh actually sorry i've overshot the game pardon me the game actually ended here on queen f2 check move 73 the game actually ended here so both engines thought it was totally winning for white uh, as an example extension example queen b6 check here uh white's a pawn is pretty strong <laughs> indeed uh so this is just a token continue a simulation where eventually yeah something's going to fall off because of the a pawn it's going to be winning i'll take you back to the final end game end of the game position uh so some interesting points there uh loose pieces in general in over the board chess cost a lot of players points when they leave pieces unprotected unprotected pieces uh so it did seem fundamentally the tactic was based initially on an unprotected piece from a risk perspective uh so a risk was taken grabbing a pawn and not really understanding the full tactical impact it was extremely subtle in the way these various checks which sort of ticked off things to control certain diagonals and then this forcing the king to the center where bishop takes b5 was winning the loose piece on b2 so it seems as though uh on a couple of occasions within that bigger combination there were loose pieces to exploit so fascinating tactically and the question here for leela team is if later ids of the leela networks would still fall for this uh, queen takes f4 material grab and not really understand the tactical impact of doing that so that's fascinating it's a great tactical chess challenge here to see if if that kind of thing can be foreseen more uh so as capablanca said that the best lessons are from the games we lose in chess it was actually literally quite a painful day for me yesterday <laughs> because like, <laughs> yeah Lula not just lost this but lost another and uh, <laughs> so I feel it's like being a football sports I've never been an avid football sporter but the Lula and Stockfish I feel like we're like football teams at the moment <laughs> on the various tournaments 
supporting our favorite team no some people obviously i i like both engines as well though i do like the tactics of stockfish and this was more than what meets the eye this was really advanced tactics after the initial winning exchange that just set the start of the of the major combination which clarified it really was the exchange up without any any major compensation in fact white was getting this powerful winning outside past a pawn eventually i hope you enjoyed this game and please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbowl.net play other youtubers uh, you can also check the youtube analysis in advance of these games or the updated analysis with the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order button comments questions relations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciate it check out the new teespring straw and also uh channel memberships are now available you get perks like a, a full month full member membership at chessworld.net where you could like export all the pgns play puzzles play me if you want so check that out on the youtube channel memberships now available for this channel as well thanks very much